A wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries and some of the new mysteries in regards to the already mysterious objects known as magnetars. The objects representing some of the most exotic matter in the entire universe, and the objects whose properties are so extreme that they are basically impossible to imagine using any earthly comparisons. And specifically, we're going to be discussing the object discovered right here in the Milky Way galaxy, whose origin is currently unknown, but whose discovery might provide an explanation for the other mystery of cosmology, referred to as FRBs, fast radio bursts. And so let's discuss this in more detail, but first, so okay, what exactly is a magnetar if you've never heard of this before? And well, it's actually really hard to imagine, but basically, it's a collection of some of the most extreme matter in the universe, condensed into such a small volume that if it was actually even smaller, it would turn into a black hole. And though it is kind of similar to a neutron star, they also seem to possess many properties that neutron stars do not have. For example, out of approximately 3000 known neutron stars, many of which have been observed as radio pulsars, or basically they create these radio emissions visible from planet Earth, only 30 so far have been identified as magnetars that though also sometimes emit radio emissions, seem to produce emissions in a lot of other frequencies, including X-rays and gamma rays. And even though a typical neutron star is already quite magnetic, with a typical pulsar potentially being at least a trillion times stronger in terms of magnetism compared to planet Earth, a typical magnetar is at least a thousand times stronger still, making these literally the most powerful magnets in the entire universe. One scary comparison I've heard before is that if you were to somehow find yourself approximately a thousand kilometers away from a typical magnetar, you would literally die instantly because the strength of the magnetic field here would cause every single atom inside one's body to completely fall apart. But because only 30 such objects have been officially confirmed, there is still a lot of mystery about them and especially about their origins. Even though it's assumed that they are created through supernova, this has never been confirmed and the actual mechanism of their formation is still not clear. As a matter of fact, in one of the recent studies in the description, we've discussed a potential formation that's not a supernova, that basically involves different types of star collisions, but even that is still uncertain. But in the last decade or so, many different unusual exotic emissions from across the universe, including the mysterious fast radio bursts and various types of gamma ray bursts, have basically been explained as magnetars potentially doing something unusual we've never seen before and possibly experiencing some kind of an exotic event because a lot of these emissions otherwise make no sense and there is really no way to explain them unless we use magnetars. And one such bizarre detection happened not so long ago in 2024. Here there was a really strange ultra bright explosion. This was coming from a famous galaxy known as M82, also referred to as the Cigar Galaxy. And so at a distance of 12 million light years, this was a very unusual and very unexpected detection. And it was basically a blast of super high energy that lasted a fraction of a second, but was extremely violent and extremely powerful. Here the amount of energy was equivalent to a relatively small supernova. But there was no actual supernova, and at first it was not clear what's really happening. And though here the event resembled a typical gamma ray burst, it was a little bit different. And eventually all of this was traced back to a magnetar. And actually the first ever confirmed extragalactic magnetar located outside of the Milky Way. And so this very strange ultra-bright explosion turned out to be the result of a very strange star quake, which seems to happen when the magnetar's super powerful magnetic field changes the star spin just a little bit, dramatically disrupting its outer layers, which then resulted in this powerful explosion or this giant flare that released a lot of gamma rays in less than one second. And to date this is the third such event discovered, with the other one being in the Milky Way and the third one being in the Large Magellanic Cloud. So basically after 50 years of observations, it's now been officially confirmed that a lot of these star quakes on magnetars can result in some ridiculous emissions resembling gamma ray bursts and potentially a lot of other explosions including fast radio bursts. And they've actually been connected to many other anomalies in regards to various emissions including what's known as AXP, also known as anomalous X-ray pulsars, which are basically pulsars that seem to emit X-ray radiation and tremendous emissions of X-rays that at first made no sense. Only a few have been discovered so far, but once again magnetars seem to be the best explanation. And so in that sense we have many different powerful emissions in many different wavelengths, with really only one culprit behind all of them. 
They all seem to be the result of various activities inside magnetars. But here's the thing. As I mentioned in the beginning, we actually still have absolutely no idea what magnetars are, or specifically, how they form. With the recent study that we're going to be discussing now, essentially confirming that it possibly is not the result of a supernova. In other words, unlike other neutron stars, there's a very high chance that magnetars seem to form in other ways, or at least some magnetars do not form from supernova. And here, the story stars with a magnetar discovered a few years back, originally seen by the Swift Observatory. This was actually found back in 2008, and this is the original image. Here this was first detected as a soft gamma ray repeater, or essentially a kind of a gamma ray pulsar. It was detected because of these very intense flashes of gamma rays coming from the outskirts of the Milky Way galaxy. And eventually it was confirmed to be one of these 30 magnetars known to us, now referred to by this name. And while well, approximately a decade ago, researchers also discovered a supernova remnant not so far from this object, which several studies linked to this magnetar, suggesting that this is maybe how it was created. At first, all of this kind of made sense. But this was of course based on slightly older assumptions that supernova and magnetars have to be connected. As a matter of fact, one of the older assumptions was that magnetars are just basically extremely young neutron stars, possibly the result of extremely recent supernova that happened in the last few thousands of years. With the other assumption being that as magnetars get older, they essentially stop being so magnetized and potentially become either pulsars or just typical quiet neutron stars. But these assumptions were not based on evidence. And the evidence from this magnetar seems to point at something entirely different. And so in this recent study, the team you see right here revisited this magnetar once again, specifically focusing on its motion across the night skies by using the observations from the Hubble Space Telescope. Now because this magnetar was essentially kind of in the middle of nowhere, but somewhat close to the supernova remnant, it was initially assumed to be coming from inside. But after 12 years of observations using Hubble and by tracking the motion across the night skies, the magnetar's position and its trajectory seem to actually be very different. As in its apparent motion was not coming from the supernova remnant and the magnetar was not associated with any remnant anywhere. And when the scientists tried to trace back the motion several thousand years, they basically found nothing in the pathway, or really anything that could explain the existence of this magnetar. And that created a bit of a mystery, but also a potential solution. First of all, this implied that this magnetar either has to be really old, much much older than 20,000 years old, and coming from somewhere entirely different, which already contradicted some of the previous ideas about magnetars, or maybe this magnetar was produced by some kind of a very low energy supernova that left almost nothing behind it, which basically kind of also didn't make sense because we should see something, or more likely, here the magnetar formed through a very different process that has been previously explored in other studies and basically involves a merger or a white dwarf turning into a neutron star through a process of accretion which currently is the best possible explanation and actually provides an explanation for many different mysteries across the universe. And this is based on two formation theories that have been proposed a few years back, but the evidence for which did not exist until now. For example, it is possible for a magnetar to form if two much smaller neutron stars collide and do not result in an explosion known as kilonova. By itself, this would be a very rare event, but it is possible. However, a much more likely situation here is something we've actually seen many times. This could be a result of the accretion process around a really, really massive white dwarf. And these types of systems do exist in many locations in the Milky Way galaxy. Basically, here we have a white dwarf consuming a lot of mass from its partner and usually resulting in some kind of a nova once in a while. But in a situation where it basically reaches a critical mass, these white dwarfs are expected to explode, but not always. Sometimes they can also collapse. And if they do collapse, they should produce a neutron star as well. But several models examining this resulted in the production of an extremely magnetized neutron star, which would resemble a magnetar in every single way. And so the best explanation for the existence of this magnetar is what's known as accretion-induced collapse. If this proposition is correct, there actually should be still presence of some kind of a companion nearby, and signs of this should be visible in some of the future observations. But most importantly, if this is actually confirmed, this would serve as a very important step in explaining so many mysteries coming from different regions in the universe. Specifically things like fast radio bursts and different types of gamma ray bursts that occasionally came from regions where they should not exist. 
not so long ago, we've discussed some of the more mysterious FRBs that seem to have come from locations where there are basically no stars, or at least no visible stars. But white dwarfs with partners can technically exist there, and in theory should be able to produce a magnetar that could then once again result in a very powerful explosion like the one seen from the M82 galaxy. Basically the result of some kind of a star quake on the surface. And so when it comes to astronomy, and when it comes to mysteries of different signals, right now this is a super exciting discovery that provides a very important piece of evidence. Since we found one of these objects right here in the Milky Way galaxy, chances are they do exist everywhere, and chances are a lot of powerful emissions and powerful explosions such as gamma ray bursts, superluminous supernova and fast radio bursts all come from very similar magnetars in the middle of nowhere. And because this object is approximately 15,000 light years away from us, it now allows us to study them in more detail and possibly resolve so many mysteries in astronomy all at once. Unless, of course, someone does discover some kind of a supernova remnant where this object potentially came from which would unfortunately invalidate this hypothesis. But nevertheless, this is still a super exciting discovery, and we'll definitely come back and discuss this more once there are some additional discoveries about magnetars, or the biggest mystery in astronomy, fast radio bursts. And so until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.